Okay, Raven, so in this shot, we've got two really cute kids. Um, what are you looking to do here? What was the problem? Well, the thing with taking uh, pictures with kids is that they're never looking at the camera at the same time. Is there some way that I could maybe put these two pictures together? That is definitely very possible, and one of the greatest things in uh, the latest version of Photoshop CS3 is it's got a very cool new feature called Auto Align, which we'll get to in just a moment. But we know that we want to combine these two images, so it's very easy if we select the Move tool and simply drag from one image to the other and hold down the shift key, the images are perfectly aligned. The problem here is that these were two separate exposures, or two separate shots, so you know the camera moves, you move, so everything's not going to be completely aligned. So if we turn this top layer off and watch the kids at the table, we can see how the whole shot moved. That's where this new auto align feature is really going to come in handy. Because what we can do is in the layers palette, we'll select both of these layers and then we'll go up to the edit menu and go to auto align layers and for projection we're just going to leave the default auto setting and this is a really cool feature because what it's going to do is analyze those two images and make any kind of adjustments that it needs to make them perfectly aligned so now that it's gone through and made the adjustment let's take a look at what's happened if I toggle off this top layer we can see that now while the kids' heads have moved, all the furniture, the table, everything is staying in the same place. We have the top layer with one child looking at the camera and the bottom layer with the second child looking. So what we're going to do is use our brush and we're simply going to paint out of one layer. We're going to click on this top layer and we're going to click the Add Layer Mask button. And again, when we have a white layer mask, the top image is going to show through completely. If we set that mask to black, the bottom image will show through completely. So what we want to do, looking at the image, we can see that, that the child here is looking at the camera, so we want to leave him alone. But it's this little guy that we want to do something about. Right. So we're going to choose the brush tool again, and we're going to make sure that our foreground color is set to black. And what I'm going to do is simply paint over that layer mask. And wow. you can see it's really, it's taking away That's unbelievable. <laughs> everything in the top image. But the alignment of everything, the table and the chairs and the wall, are all staying exactly the same. Like magic. It looks super easy. I, I can't believe it. I, I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's great. And now it looks like I took a perfect picture. <laughs> We've seen how to combine images in Photoshop using layer masks to isolate specific parts of the image to work on. The more you work with these techniques, the more options open up for creating your perfect image. Next up, we open the mailbag and answer your questions. Our first question comes from Ethan in Dumbo who writes, I have a compact camera and shoot in low light situations, but my shadows have no detail, instead randomly colored pixels. What causes this and how can I get better results? Well, Ethan, what you're seeing is known as digital noise and it's not pretty. In order to shoot in low light situations, you have to increase the sensitivity of your camera's imaging chip by setting a higher ISO speed. The problem is that in this increased state of sensitivity, the camera sensor starts to record heat and electrical noise generated inside the camera itself. Now this shows up as randomly colored pixels that have absolutely no image information whatsoever. If you want to avoid this, it's time to really start looking at a digital SLR. One of the biggest advantages these cameras have over compact models is they have a physically larger imaging chip and a larger chip means more image data and less noise. And don't be too concerned about comparing megapixels between the two because a digital SLR with only eight megapixels will actually deliver cleaner and more detailed images than a compact camera that stuffs 12 megapixels onto its tiny sensor. So remember, for high quality and low image noise, it's the size of the sensor, not the number of megapixels. Our next question comes from Silvana in Montclair who writes, is it better to shoot in JPEG or RAW mode? Well, Savannah, the short answer is that you'll have higher quality and better editing options by shooting in RAW mode. Shooting JPEGs is convenient, gives you a small file size, and gives you images that can immediately be uploaded to your website or emailed. It's like picking up your slide film from the photo lab. What you get is what you get. With RAW mode, you are the photo lab. All decisions about edit adjustments are deferred until you're sitting in front of the computer. And best of all, shooting in RAW mode gives you the full range of data that your sensor can capture. Now, you will have to add RAW conversion software to your workflow and make accommodations for larger file sizes, 
but when high quality and control are your concerns, shooting raw is the way to go. Now, it's time for this week's quick tip. 